So this is uh, the second video on mediation, this time looking at how process gets the job done. Okay, so we're using the same uh, model that we used in uh, the last video, last time we did it in SPSS, and you can see there the required analysis, and uh, so our first video went through how to produce that table. Okay, so if you don't remember how that was done, just go back and watch that video. But now we're going to see how process does the same analysis and then adds bootstrapping to that. Okay, so now we've got uh, SPSS here and uh, we're going to go analyze, regression, and come down to process by Hayes. If you don't have this option, then you haven't got process installed. You need to go to Andrew Hayes' website and download it from there. Okay, so we're going to just do the same mediation that we did before. Uh, so we have reading scores as our DV and family history is our independent variable and cognitive skills is the mediator. Okay, so this is the same thing that we did last time. Just this time we're doing in process. So for options, uh, we are using model 4 because that is mediation. It's the default one when you open process. So we're sitting here on model 4. So some of these only apply to model 1. Centering is something you do in moderation sometimes. Plotting, you need that for moderation. But what we want are the model 4 options. So we get the effect sizes, we get the Sobel test, we want the total effect model. We've only got one mediator, so we're not comparing other indirect effects. We're only going to have one, so we just want that. Okay, and so we click continue there, and that's all good to go. Uh, if you download it now, you get 5,000 as, as the default option for number of bootstrap samples. The ones at the end are 1,000. 5,000 is a better option. Uh, doesn't make a lot of difference. Okay, so that's all set up and ready to go. Model for 5,000 samples. We've got it all set. So we say OK to that. And has a think about it. And it says down here running matrix. That tells me it's working. And here it is, it's done. So I'm currently at the end of it. I want to go back to the start of it. So I'll use my navigation panel here to click up and get to the start of the matrix. So this is process output. First thing to check is that we put the right things in the right places. We've got reading as the Y value, so that's dependent variable. History on X, which is the independent variable on M. In this case, mediator is cognitive skills. All good. So we scroll down and you can see there the first analysis, the outcome or dependent variable is cognitive skills. And if we look at the model that it's tested, it's got one predictor and that's history. So this is our IV history over here, family history, predicting our mediator, which is cognitive skills. Okay, so that's path A. And you can see up in the box that we produced last week that, uh, or in the previous video, path A, and here we have the same coefficients, minus 7.70, minus 7 point, more decimal places, but same number. Standard error, 2.4. Yep, that's just rounded. The confidence intervals match here and here. So process has just done the same analysis. It's given us a p-value. Um, the one thing it hasn't given us is the standardized regression coefficient, beta. For that, we need SPSS. Process doesn't do it for us. So if I scroll down, that was path A. This next one, our outcome or dependent variable is reading. And we have two IVs, cognitive skills and history. So this is the third analysis that we did in the previous video. And that's down here, which gave us paths B and C dashed. And you can see the coefficients for history are here. Minus 12.02, here's history, minus 12.02. It's the same analysis. Cognitive skills matches those numbers there, match these numbers here. So there's paths B and C produced, uh, B and C dashed, I should say, 
in um, process you scroll down we got one more analysis to do which process calls total effect that's what it calls path C and we've got DV is reading and IV is history so that was the one we listed first here which was path C and again the numbers match minus 27.16 minus 27.16 that would uh, a bit of rounding error in there but that's okay near enough okay so process has just done all the same analyses what's different is the process then that scroll scroll probably went a bit quick so there's our path C we were just looking at and then you notice it says total direct and indirect effects this is how process is going to summarize uh, the results this is the new bit this is the bootstrapping bit or where bootstrapping comes in okay so let's see uh, what process is going to tell us down there so basically we're getting rid of those analyses we've got those we've got them from SPSS process does them as well now we're moving on to what process adds okay so notice here we've got total effect direct effect and we're going to get a single coefficient for the indirect path AB, which runs from the IV through the mediator and to the DV. Okay, so those are the effects that process is going to uh, now look at for us, and particularly the indirect effect that's going to use bootstrapping. Okay, so now we go back to SPSS and below where it says total effect, it's going to give us these total direct and indirect effect. I'll scroll down here. Okay, here they are. So the first one it gives is the total effect. And you can see I've labeled that here on the model. It's what we previously called path C. Okay, and it's going to give us this coefficient here that's the unstandardized regression coefficient b and it's 27.15 okay for path c then the direct effect which we would call path c dashed uh, it's given us a an unstandardized coefficient of minus 12.02 now we got both of those in spss notice this isn't bootstrapped it's got a p value Anytime you see a p-value, it's not bootstrapping. But the new one that it's given us is this next one, which is the indirect effect of x on y. And that's uh, what we were calling previously path a, b. It's the indirect effect. So it's a combination of those two paths. And here it is. We've got a coefficient of minus 15.13. Standard error there. And the bootstrapped confidence interval here minus 27 to minus 4 they're both negative numbers so we haven't crossed zero we started at minus 27 we came up as high as minus 4 but we didn't come up to zero we stopped before we got to zero uh, so that tells me there's no zero in that confidence interval so it's a significant effect the indirect effect is significant path a b is significant and uh, and that's the key to mediation that that indirect pathway accounts for significant variance in the DV. Uh, now it's hard to get an estimate of how much it does um, and so process gives a number of different effect sizes here. Um, none of them are a great option. There's no uh, consensus in the literature yet as to which one to use. Um, so at this point if you're reporting mediation don't try messing with any of them just give a coefficient for it. Either you can use um, the one that you produce in SPSS by multiplying the betas, it should match up with this completely standardized coefficient given in process. Or you can use the unstandardized indirect coefficient here. Just make sure you're clear about whether it's an unstandardized or a standardized coefficient. The main thing is that it's significant and both the indirect effect and the completely standardized indirect effect will tell you the same thing. There'll be no zero in this confidence interval if there's no zero in that confidence interval. Uh, so they're telling you that uh, we have significant mediation and that's how you do that in process.